Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Nautil Engineering. This is a part two of shape memory alloy modeling using finite element analysis series. In earlier video, we discussed shape memory alloy basics. If you did not see that video, please have a look. I will provide the link in the description box below. And in this video, we are going to focus on constitutive model used to simulate shape memory alloys in software Mark Mentat. These two models are for shape memory effect. Here temperature is important. That's why those are thermostructural models. Again, there are two types, but they are very close to each other. And for super elasticity, Mark has this model, which is only structural model because we don't have to consider the temperature change. Now for this tutorial, we are going to focus on only this type one thermostructural model. Now to understand the material model for shape memory alloy, we need to introduce some terms. Let's say initially at lower temperature, we have 100% martensite. Now as we start to increase the temperature, there comes one temperature denoted as AS, after which martensite starts to transform into austenite. That's why percentage martensite is going down and percentage austenite will go up. That is not shown on this graph, but always addition of two phases will be 100. And if we keep increasing the temperature, finally we will reach another temperature denoted as AF where all the martensite will be transformed to austenite. So these two temperatures are known as austenite start temperature and austenite finish temperature. Now our part is heated and we have 100% austenite. If we start to cool that part, we observe some unique phenomena. When we start to cool at AF, austenite doesn't start converting to martensite. But instead of that, it starts converting to martensite at temperature MS over here. And this MS is always lower than AF. And if we keep cooling, finally at temperature over here, which is denoted by MF, all of the austenite is now transferred into martensite. And these two temperatures are are known as martensite start temperature and martensite finish temperature and here as well mf will be lower than as and because of this phenomena we will see some hysteresis loop over here these four temperatures are very important for any sma but complexity doesn't end here because all these four temperatures are dependent on stress state and this is how they change now consider this diagram over here which is stress versus temperature now if you take any temperature such as let's say austenite start temperature and if you plot how it changes versus stress you will get this straight line and similarly for other three temperatures as well usually what is found is the slope of austenite start temperature line and austenite finish temperature line will be same and we are denoting that by ca and slope for martensite start and martensite finish temperature is again same which is denoted by cm over here hence we can write equation of line for these temperatures and that is exactly what is given over here and for this we have to introduce some new terms such as ms0 mf0 as0 and af zero. These are nothing but the transformation temperatures when stress is zero. So these four values are these stress-free transformation temperatures. And then CM and CA are the slope of martensite and austenite temperature versus stress lines. One important question here to ask is which stress is this? As you know, stress is a tensor. It is not a scalar quantity. So what stress do we consider over here? In equation, you can see it is mentioned as equivalent stress and there are multiple ways to define it. Most commonly used is one micer stress. Now the main part. In Mark, the total strain for SMA will be divided into four strains. Here it is given in form of strain rate because it is easier to define in that way, but you get the idea. So the first part is elastic strain. Here there is nothing fancy. You can get the relation between strain and stress using Hooke's law. Second part is thermal strain. This is also exactly same as we define for other materials. The only thing to note here is the coefficient of thermal expansion will be calculated based on rule of mixture. Hence, we have to define the thermal coefficient of expansion separately for austenite and for martensite. And then Mark will calculate the overall coefficient of thermal expansion based on what is the volume fraction of each phase. Third part is plastic strain and this evolves with the rules of plasticity. So we have to define yield surface and hardening rules, etc. And finally, the fourth part is something called called as transformation related strain. This is the crux of SMA modeling. This strain actually occurs when martensite gets converted to austenite or austenite gets converted to martensite. This strain is again divided into two parts. First part is called as trip, which is strain due to transformation of austenite to martensite or martensite to austenite. And the second part is twin, which is because of transformation of martensite from twin to d twin orientation. And constitutive model is nothing but relation between strain and stress. So somehow we have to 
relate these two strains to stress to get a complete model and that is given by these equations i know these equations looks a little bit daunting but it's quite easy to understand over here this delta f positive represents the rate at which martensite is formed and delta f negative is the rate at which martensite is decreased this epsilon eq and epsilon v are deuteric and volumetric part and sigma effective it's some critical stress below which twinning is not possible but the main part over here is this g function this g function is dependent on equivalent stress again this can be von mises or any other type of stress as well this g function varies between 0 to 1 as shown over here and this represents the extent to which the transformation strains are coaxial with applied deuteric stress the formula for g function is shown over here and this g function is kind of alternative for explicitly modeling detwinned and twinned volume fraction of martensite means in reality there can be three phases in material one is austenite one is twinned martensite and another is detwinned martensite hence we will need two volume fractions in the material model but that increases the complexity of material model so that's why g function is used and when we use this we just need one volume fraction here all these constants they need to be found out by curve fitting experimental data but mark has given some suggestions and in most cases it is observed that only first term is sufficient we can ignore the next two terms i know what you're thinking these are too many parameters but that's all we have so if we list down all the parameters needed to define sma material in mark we will get this list we need four unstressed transformation temperatures then we need two slope values for elastic part of the strain we will need to define young's modulus and poisson's ratio and we have to define that separately for martensite and austenite then thermal coefficient of expansions then we have to calibrate the g function of course we have to define yield stress again separately for martensite and and austenite and their hardening rules and finally transformation strain parameters now the good news is in mark we have already given all these parameters for nitinol in one of the example in user guide so if your material is same you can go ahead and use those parameters you don't have to worry about anything but let's say your material is something different then of course you have to perform some experiments and extract these parameters out of those experimental results let's just quickly see how we can do that and then we will solve one example we will not discuss all these experiments in detail because that is not the focus area of this video you can pause the video and read through it but in short there are some techniques available such as differential scanning calorimetry or thermomechanical analysis using which you can obtain stress free temperatures and also slopes for transformation temperature line in most cases it is very difficult to obtain stress free material so usually experiments are done for some known stress values and then we will extend that line and extrapolate the stress free temperature next measurement of elastic constants this can be done using tensile testing or some other methods such as nano indentation but the important point here is initially during the loading we can get austenite elastic properties and we have to keep loading until 100% of austenite is transformed to martensite and then when we perform unloading we can get elastic properties for martensite the next is measurement of thermal expansion coefficients again there are different techniques such as dilatometers or x-ray diffraction using which we can obtain those and finally the calibration of g function for this we will need uniaxial stress strain curve for pure randomly oriented martensite and we have to conduct that experiment at temperature which is below martensite finish temperature hence during the entire test material will be always 100% martensite which will make strain due to transformation zero hence epsilon trip will be zero and we will be left with this equation then we have to curve fit this equation onto the experimental results which will give us the g function now one good question which can be asked here is can Mentat do this? Like if you have this experimental curve, can you just directly give it to Mentat and Mentat will split out those parameters? Unfortunately, at this point, answer is no. So you have to do it by your own and then enter those parameters in Mentat. But hopefully in future, maybe it will be included. And finally, we have to obtain yield stresses and transformation strains as well. And in Mark documentation, you can find some range for these parameters for nitinol material. So you may have to do few simulations with different values between these ranges and decide the final value based on Then you get good agreement with the experimental the results i think we already talked a lot about material model so i'll not go into this thermomechanical type 2 model i'll just mention a couple of things here type 2 model is very similar to type 1 whatever we till talked everything holds the only difference is in type 2 model you have multiple options for plasticity definition in type 1 there is only one option available and also in type 2 model you can define these parameters alpha t and beta t using which you can model asymmetric tension compression behavior because for some SMAs their behavior in tension and compression will be little bit different let's stop here but we have three more videos coming up 
in next video we will solve a simple example using mark mentat we will build the example from scratch so you will not need any files to start then in the video after that we will solve orthodontic wire bending example which is shown over here and finally in the last video we will discuss mathematical model used in mark for super elasticity and also solve an example using that model if you like this video please show your support by subscribing to this channel which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these you can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together for example let's say if you are interested in ansys tutorials you can go to this ansys tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist all the codes and files which i use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's github profile the link of this profile is given in the description box below if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below and as always thank you for watching